Right, guys, good morning. We're going to carry on this morning with where we start off last week. Today is going to be a little repetitive of last week. Um, so we started looking at the chronological order of Paul's epistle, the Pauline epistles that Paul wrote, and try to come to a, um, an understanding of, of um, the, when, it, when he wrote it, and um, during the book of Acts or post-Acts. And so we started looking at that last week. And um, as I said to you last week, I said, you know, if you're going to study the Scriptures and you want to know the details of it, <clears throat> it's good for you to know the timing of the writing of the Pauline epistles during the book of Acts. It's helpful to do so, okay? Um, I'm not saying it's critical that you have to understand this, but I have had questions about it, and we've been talking to various people concerning, or various people have been talking to me concerning the timing and the writing of the epistles. And one of the questions that comes up is, is, was Galatians written before Thessalonians, or was Thessalonians written through Galatians? That's the big one that always comes up. And, um, and so we, last week when we started looking at that, one of the things I told you uh, last week, when we just go through, I'm going to quickly run through this. I'm not going to go in detail, but this morning I'm going to show you some things um, to look at, okay? Some considerations that we need to take when it comes, when we come down and kind of try to figure out the timing of Paul's epistles, some of the considerations. There's no dates given by inspiration. God never inspired a word that you wrote in the Bible that says A.D. 64, A.D. 53, or A.D. 54, or, or B.C. God never inspired a date. So dates that is in your Bible and written in your Bible and made notes in your Bible has been put there by man. And if you look at these dates, and you can sit and you're going to go and study these dates out but for various people and various uh, scholars, you're going to find out that they don't even have a conclusive, uh, 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 they don't all agree. They're out three or four years, or most of them, okay? And so it's important that we understand that no dates are given by inspiration. However, sometimes we can assume in a date, we can take a stab at a date based on something that maybe if, if, if the scripture. Uh, uh, mentions Pontius Pilate in the third year. Then you can figure out from history, etc., extra biblical information in history when that was, and you can come to a fairly accurate date on that. Okay. Another consideration that we talked about is that, but what was given by inspiration is more important than when it was written. Now I understand when we rightly divide the word of truth, Paul writes Romans through Philemon. When I say when it was written. I'm not talking about this dispensation of grace. I'm talking about the specific dating it, calling it 54 or 54. That is not important. What was written down is more important. As you go into the doctrine and as you look at the Scriptures, <clears throat> you're going to come to an understanding of the Scriptures and it's working in you, not the timing. It's the Scripture that works in us. Okay, and it's important that we, but we do understand that, okay, than, than, than when it was written, okay? We will speculate about the time or order of, of, of writing in an epistle against the events, people, or places. I've already said that to you, and what that we will do. Some of the things that we also have to consider, we need to take note. Acts does not record all of the history of Paul's travels. Acts does not record all of the history of Paul's travels. Because Paul mentions in his epistles places like Spain and places beyond Macedonia that it's not in Acts. He's never gone there in Acts. Okay, so it doesn't record all of his... Now you can read later on about his desire to go to Spain and or places where the gospel reached forth and where he got to. But it's, Acts does not record all of that. Number two is we do not have Paul's post-Acts troubles, travels. And we have to assume those based on what we're going to study here concerning the timing of the epistles, okay? So it does not include post-Acts travels. Because post-Acts, it seems to me, as we're going to look at this, at this study, it seems to me that after Acts, when Paul went to Rome at the end of Acts, he was released for a season, he was at liberty for a season, and during that season at his liberty, he wrote, it, he wrote Titus 
and First Timothy. And during the writing of those two, he was traveling around before he was in the second imprisonment in Second Timothy, okay? Paul visits some places several times. We have to understand that. Paul doesn't go, he goes to Macedonia, not once. He goes to Macedonia many times through Macedonia. So when you write, when Paul says he's writing from Macedonia, you have to then try and figure out which time. What was Because he went to Macedonia once, twice, three, four times. Which one is it that he wrote? Okay? And so, and, 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 there's, and there's, some, there's, some, there's some things that are happening at the timing where Paul, you know, it's not very clear. Some events happens more than once, like Paul being beaten. He's talking about the Jews receiving five stripes less, uh, five, uh, um, 40 stripes less one, five times. You know? So, you know, he was stoned, he was beaten, he was, you know, all these things, various things, he was thrown into jail and all these things. Which one is it according to that? So, some of these things happen more than once, okay? The history of, uh, of <coughs> Paul is not complete, as we did say. We do, but what we do have, as we, what we do know, is what God has given us in His Word. We have, we have the completed Word of God. And God has given us, by inspiration and by preservation, His inspired Word. That's what we have. That's what we have to rely on. Do not rely on extra biblical revelation to prove your Scripture. What God needs us to have and needs us to know is in the Scripture. It works in us that believes it. And the information is there, okay? And so we've got, we looked at 2 Timothy. Let me just read it for, this, for, for, for reading a passage this morning in 2 Timothy. And by the way, if you have a question, put your hand up so that I can see you have a question. And we can try and deal with it like, like um, from that point of view, okay? Um, I don't mind you putting your hands up unless you want to take us off on the rabbit trail. We'll just stop it there and just carry back on where we need to be. But in this session, you can ask questions or if you want to add something or you have an, a thought, we can think about it and look at that, okay? But in 2 Timothy chapter, chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. So we understand that all Scripture, when he says all Scripture there, he's talking about Genesis through Revelation, he's talking about all of God's Word is written by inspiration of God, is given by inspiration of God. And so, and we know that God will promise to preserve His Word forever. Forever thy word is settled in heaven. Okay, and he's magnified his word above his name. That's how important his word is. So we know that, and so we have to take these things into consideration when we're going to look at the timing of the Pauline epistle. So last week I gave you a list, and we're going to go through this list quickly again. But I realize as I'm giving you this list of, of, the, of, the, of the order, it's okay to get the order down, you can write it down. But I realize without an understanding of seeing the bigger picture of what's going on through the book of Acts, it's very, very difficult for me just to give you, say, Acts 18, because it's just going to be a verse I'm giving you. It's not going to be suspended on anything. It's just going to hang in the middle of nowhere because you don't, you don't know where it fits and how it fits in. So I'm going to try and create, and we've done that. What, will, what is helpful is for those that have been attending the Wednesday night Bible study through the book of Acts, you'll have a little bit of a clear understanding of what's going on with these travels, unless you've spent some time through the book of Acts studying out these, uh, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the travels of Paul and of the twelve, except not twelve, but the twelve, they're moving around in the book of Acts, etc., etc. Okay? You guys all with me? Okay, so a lot of this stuff will be like, whew, it will be so overwhelming, a lot of information, okay? Just take it in. If you can't get it all, you can always go back to the video and listen on the video again. And you can ask me to send you my notes, which I have, and I'll be happily send you these notes with the maps if you need those. You know, just email me at gracewaydes at gmail.com, and I will make sure that you get these codes, uh, these, um, um, <coughs> these notes. Okay, so um, there's a map up there, and now I'm going to show you it's the pre-prison epistles of Paul has to happen before Paul goes to prison. 
when I talk about prison, I'm not talking about Paul being locked up for a night or two nights. I'm talking about him being imprisoned. Him being like when he went to Caesarea. He was there for more than two years in Caesarea. Okay? And so that starts in Acts 24. Okay? And so through Acts 28. And, and it's Paul for all part of his in, imprisonment. So this map that we see here, looking at right now here, is, the, uh, is, is, the, is through, when Paul starts, by the way, Paul gets saved in Acts chapter what? Acts chapter 9, all right? Paul gets his calling from God concerning God is going to send him far hence to the what? To the Gentiles. By Acts chapter 13, Paul gets commissioned by the church at Jerusalem or at Antioch? Where? Jerusalem of Antioch. Say it out loud. Huh? Antioch, that's right, the church there, because now the, it's the headquarters for Paul's ministry. Jerusalem was the headquarters of the apostles, but Antioch of Syria became the head office of, of, of the body of Christ and the, and the commission of Paul. In Acts chapter 13, Paul is commissioned from there by the Holy Ghost and the elders at the church, and Paul is sent out on his missionary journeys in Acts chapter 13. On his, I call it missionary journeys. When I say that, I say that I don't like to call it missionary journeys. I like to call it apostolic journeys. But sometimes missionary journey comes out of my mouth because that's what I've learned my whole life. Okay? And it's not just, you know, so just get over it. If you hear missionary, don't get self-tense when I say mission, okay? That's not what I mean. Apostolic journey because God sent him a specific journey out then from Antioch. So that starts in Acts chapter 13. If you look there in Acts chapter 13, it starts um, and through 14 verse 5. He goes to Cyprus, Antioch, Pisidia, and Iconium. So Paul starts at Antioch. He goes to Cyprus, to Paphos. Then he goes to Perga. And from Perga, he goes into the area of Galatia. There is the area of Galatia and Antioch of Pisidia. Iconium, Lystra, and Derby is the main places that Paul is ministering to. And that's where the churches of Galatia gets established. By Acts 14, Paul goes through those areas. He goes back through those areas, visits with all the elders, sets up elders, ordains elders, and set things in order for the local churches by the end of chapter 14 is established. And Paul is on his way back to, he's going to make his way back to Antioch. That's his first apostolic journey, was basically Cyprus, Pamphylia, and the main time that covers Acts is covered is through the book of, in the book of the churches of Galatia. When Paul writes to the churches of Galatia, there's churches, there's not just one church. There's various churches, and these churches in Galatia is in Antioch of Pisidia, Iconium, Lystra, Derby. All these things, he establishes those churches in Acts chapter 13 and chapter 14. Those gets established and gets organized there in Acts chapter 13 and 14. You guys with me? Right? That's his first apostolic journey. All right? Then, Paul goes to, as he's back in Antioch, he goes back, he comes back from those areas, comes back from those areas, and he's in Antioch, and, and in chapter 15 of Acts, what happens in Acts 15? What happens in Acts 15? He goes to Jerusalem. Why does he go to Jerusalem? Because of the question of circumcision and the question of the law. Okay? He goes down to Jerusalem to discuss with the elders at Jerusalem and the apostles. Paul calls them in Acts 15 the apostles and the elders. The apostles are the twelve apostles. And the elders are the elders of the church of Jerusalem. Who is the chief elder at the church of Jerusalem? Anybody know? James. James is the chief elder. And he goes there to discuss. And they have that Jerusalem meeting and that conference there concerning these issues of the law and the circumcision. And Peter then tells the guys, hey, you know, guys, it's by my that God that the Gentiles first heard and God is saving them. And James, and he says, we should not put a yoke upon these disciples, these church at Antioch, and Paul and the new churches gets established in Galatia, put this yoke upon their shoulder because they can't bear it. What happened in Galatia? As soon as Paul left, soon after he's leaving, what happens there? 
the Jews come in and say, hey, you have to keep circumcised and you have to keep the law and you've got to keep the Sabbath and you've got to do all that stuff. And they mix law with Paul's grace in there. And this is the question that Paul is going about there. And then James, the elder, stands up in Acts 15 and says, hey guys, we agree with Peter here. We agree. We, they can't bear it. But this is a few things that we would like you to remember. If you want to have success with the Jews as you're going to preach to them, we acknowledge that God has sent you far hence to the Gentiles. But as you're going to do that, you're going to preach to the Jews too. And if you, have to ha if you want to have success with the Jews, keep these things in mind. Don't eat animals strangled. Don't eat blood. You know, remember these things. Because if you're going to do that, like the Gentiles are doing, you're not going to get through to the Jews. Remember these things. So Paul in Acts chapter 15, he's down there in Jerusalem, and this is what's happening there. And by the way, what passage in the Scripture corresponds with Acts chapter 15? The event at Jerusalem. What other passage in the Bible tells you about that event? Galatians chapter 2. Paul go, tells us going up there by revelation and, and um, took Titus and he was not compelled to be circumcised and they added nothing to him but the contrary he added to their understanding. They got the right hand of fellowship. Remember the poor saints of Jerusalem which was asked in Acts 15 as well. You with me? Because why was they poor saints in Jerusalem? Because they sold everything that they have because they were waiting for the kingdom and now it's been interrupted. They understand by Acts 15, Galatians 2, they understood the program has changed. And Paul is the apostle. They know it and understand it now. Because that's what we went through when we went through the book of Acts. Okay? So Paul goes then back to Antioch at the end of, of 15. And by the way, when he goes back to Antioch, they send some, apost some people with them from the elders there with him back, who we now later on find one of them is going to be an apostle, Silas, Silphanus comes back up there to confirm these things. Hey, we agree, and Jerusalem is in agreement with this. And then at the end of chapter 15, let me give you some history. Are you guys with me? At the end of 15, Barnabas, in chapters 13 and 14 through Galatia, who was Paul's companion? Barnabas. At the end of chapter 15, Barnabas and Paul had a disagreement. Who was the disagreement about? John Mark. Because what was the disagreement about? Barnabas says, hey, let's take John Mark with us to go do the work. Paul says, uh-uh, we're not taking him with us because he left us. And this first journey, if we do the previous, in that first journey, John Mark went from Antioch with him to Cyprus, to Paphos. And when he got here to Pamphylia, what does John Mark do? He leaves them and goes back to Jerusalem to where his mother's house is. He leaves. He leaves them in the middle of the, of the journey, of the, of the apostolic journey. He leaves them. At the end of 15, Paul says, uh-uh, we're not taking John Mark with us. Why? Because he left us. So who does Paul take with him? Silas. No, who's Silas? Silas was an elder at the church of Jerusalem. He was a, a little flock member. He was a member of the little flock. So Paul takes Silas now, a member of the little flock, with him on his, aposto 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 on his second apostolic journey. And we find out later as we read the Scriptures in Thessalonians that Silas is also called an apostle. You guys with me? Now we get to the second apostolic journey. From, and it starts in Antioch, and as Paul starts at Jerniaz, he's going through Cilicia, through Tarsus, and he goes to Derbe, Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch of Pisidia, who is, which is the churches of what place? Galatia. He goes through those and sees those guys and establishes them and see how they're faring and everything you read about that in the first few verses of the book of Acts 16. Okay? And so Paul goes through that, and establish, and then he goes, this is the first time, last time he went from there back there, but now he's going to carry on in that second apostolic journey. And he's going to go through, he wants to go to Asia, Asia, but what does God say to him? The Holy Ghost says, no, you're not going to go to Asia. Then Paul says, let's go up from, not to Asia, let's go to, I think it's Bith Bithynia. 
And the God says again, no, don't go to Bithynia. And then he gets the Macedonian call to go into Macedonia. So Paul goes straight through Asia, through Troas, and he goes to Macedonia. What's the first church that Paul visits um, in Macedonia? Philippians. The Philippian church, the Philippi. He's, he goes up to Macedonia and Philippi, and then from Philippi he, he covers to Thessalonica, and from Thessalonica he goes to Berea in these chapters, and from Berea he's now going to go down to Athens in Greece, and from Athens he's going to go to Corinth, and then from Corinth he's going to go back to Ephesus. He's going to go to Eph Ephesus. That's his second apostolic journey that he goes to Ephesus in Acts 18 there. And then he goes from there back to Caesarea because Paul determined in chapter that he wants to go to Jerusalem. Okay? His first visit to Jerusalem. Are you guys with me? Alright? So now, then we have the third apostolic journey which also took place before. The first, the second, and the third one takes place before his prison epistles. So the third journey, he's going to start from Antioch again, and he's going to go again through Macedonia. You see how it's the third time, fourth time he's going to go through these churches in Macedonia. Then he goes to Ephesus, and he works his way up all the way through Philippi, Thessalonica, and he visits all these churches in Athens and Greece, goes past Athens, Corinth, goes all the way back, and then he comes down to Miletus, a chapter 3, a chapter 20, where he meets the elders of the church of Ephesus, Gives him some last instructions because he knows he's not going to see them again. And then he goes way back to, to Tyre, to Caesarea. And then he's going to go to Jerusalem. And we know what happens in Jerusalem the second time he gets there in this apostolic journeys. What happens? He gets captured. Okay. And we're going to talk about that. Let's first look at the pre-prison epistles that was written during those first three apostolic journeys. You guys with me? Is that, you guys get, the pic, get a picture here? Did you have a question there, Maureen? Yes. Now, I'm, not, I'm not saying he was not thrown into prison, into jail up to now, but he was not in prison for a long time. He's there, in Philippi, we know he's got thrown into jail, and in, in, in a prison, and then he gets released that night, the, the, you know, if, in, and the prison doors open and the bands fall off his hands and the Philippian jailer gets saved and all that stuff. We know he gets thrown into to jail, but not for a prolonged period where he's in prison waiting trial and waiting to be seen. So, so the pre-prison epistles we said to you is the book of Galatians. I'm going to just go through this quickly. I'm going to... Let me go there. So the pre-prison, we talked about this last week. I told you, in my estimation, you may disagree with me on this matter. And that's fine. I have no problem. Just because I put, I put Galatians up there before Thessalonians. Because I think, in my, the way that I reason with this, are you guys with me? The way that I reason with this is Paul says, you soon remove from me, from him that called you. Then, we know also that as Paul is writing to that, it had to be shortly after their visit, and it had to be after Acts 15. We talked about that last week. Why does he have to write the book after Acts 15? What's one of the biggest, what will be one of the biggest proofs I have that Galatians was written after Acts 15? What's that? He records what happens in Acts 15. So he records that and when he writes Galatians, so it has to be happening after Acts 15. And so it could have been any of those times he could write it. And the time of the writing of Galatians is unclear. One of the things you're going to notice about the book of Galatians, all these other books, Paul writes and he says, Timothy and Silas and Sulphanus and Tychicus and Gaius and... Uh, he calls all these names out in the other epistles, and guess what in the book of Galatians is absent? The names of the brethren, that's with him. The only thing he says in Galatians, look at Galatians chapter 1 quickly. And I'm just, I'm just talking right now about this stuff, okay? Uh, I, I find this fascinating. 
And I don't, like I said to you guys before, I don't, I don't say here to, this morning to you that I have the answers concerning this. I'm giving you where I'm at and what I understand. I might change my mind about some of these things. If you prove me wrong or prove me from scriptures, something else to consider. Look at the Galatians chapter 1. Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead, and all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia. Paul mentions there's all the brethren that's with me. Greetings unto the churches of what? Galatia. So what we do know is when Paul writes Galatians, there seems to be a plurality of brethren that's with him. Quite a few brethren. All the brethren. Not just one or two. All. He refers to quite a few people. And that had to happen before Acts 20. As we look at that, where Paul had a lot of guys around him. In Acts 20, he mentions a whole bunch of guys. Okay? So he had to write Gal uh, uh, Galatians after Acts 15, after Acts uh, 15, 41 to 16, 6, when he visits, comes back through Macedonia. Maybe Acts 18, maybe Acts 19. After those, after those. But without a doubt, not, I don't think he wrote Galatians later than Acts 20. When he goes into and he gets captured and goes into prison, it, I don't believe he wrote it after that. Okay? Then we said he wrote the book of Thessalonians. Now the book of this, oops, sorry, sorry. The Thessal book of Thessalonians, I can with pretty certainty give you the timing of the writing of Thessalonians. Based on the people that's with Paul, based on the report Paul gets when he's writing to the Thessalonians, and I can, I can compare that with the book of Acts, will give me the timing at least, the period of timing, not the precise verse, but I can, I can come to the conclusion that it's between certain verses that he actually writes those books. Second Thessalonians obviously have to follow First Thessalonians, because as we're going to look at that later on, the people that Paul writes to 1 Thessalonians is with Paul in 2 Thessalonians. And the interesting thing is when we look at 2 Thessalonians, we're going to find out that there's a guy not mentioned there. And because he's not mentioned, it has to come to the conclusion that Paul had written this epistle before Acts 20. And I'm going to show you the proof of that. And then Corinthians... He wrote, and we can for certainty make it clear because when Paul writes to the Corinthians, we know there's some clues in the passages that tells us and makes it clear to us that who's with Paul at that time and what's happening, so we can have the timing pretty clear. Then 2 Corinthians obviously follows 1 Corinthians. We'll look at why it says that. And then the book of Romans, which is written, which is very clear because, again, Paul mentions names of places and people that I can identify in the book of Acts that makes it clear that he's writing the book of Romans during that period. Now, that's the pre-prison epistles. In these epistles, Galatians, Thessalonians, Thessalonians, Corinthians, and Romans, Paul never talks about being the bond and in prison and captured, the prison of the Lord, or in bonds or anything like that. You with me? Which now brings us to the, after these pre-prison after Acts chapter 20, now we're going to have to go into these other epistles because Paul did his first three apostolic journeys up till Acts 20, okay, 21. Now, this is the third apostolic journey that I put out there for you. I just wanted to point you something. Paul is in Miletus, there, Miletus right up there, and, he's, vis and he's, invite, he's speaking to the elders of Ephesus. Now, it's not very clear. I know it's not very clear, but... Trust me, Ephes Ephesus is right there, and Miletus is right there, okay? And so Paul is coming from Miletus, he's determining to go to where? Jerusalem. And so, when he wants to go to Jerusalem, remember when he goes to Philip the Evangelist's house, and that, that, that prophet comes and takes Paul's girdle and girds his hands, and he says, you know, just like my hands are girded, the guy that, Paul, if he goes to Jerusalem, it's going to happen to you. And then also the elders told him, don't go. But, but God's will be done, so he needs to go. And so he's going to go to Jerusalem. And so what we have now, 
is uh, Paul in chapters 21 through 21. He's going to go to Jerusalem. He's going to end up in Tyre, then Caesarea, and then he's going to go in Jerusalem. That's where he's going to be taken, captured by the elders of the church. Not the elders of the church, but by the Jewish leaders. Okay? Um, in Jerusalem, he's going to be taken captive. And then from there, through we're gonna, his experiences at Jerusalem is going to happen in Acts 21 through to 23. All the experiences in Acts 21 to 23, we have all the experience in Jerusalem. And then in Acts 23, 23 to 26, he goes to the captain of the band, sees that these Jews want to kill Paul in, at Acts 21, end of Acts 22, uh, sorry, 23, want to kill Paul. And what do they do? What does he do? He esca- lets Paul escape overnight with a band of soldiers and it's taking him to Felix in Caesarea. And it's when Paul gets to Caesarea that he spends in Acts 23, 24, 25, 26 more than two years. He was two years under house arrest. But also we know from reading the passages that it's, not just, it's more than two years that he was there. And then what happens after that happens in Acts chapter 20. Can you see how difficult it is for me to try and to get to you to see? If you don't know Acts, this just be like, huh? What are you talking about? It's like, uh, you're, just, you're, you're, you're somewhere here in an open space and I just can't attach anything to anything, okay? And so, <clears throat> that was his, so then what we're going to now find out, sorry. So Paul is in prison from Acts 20, 24 to 26. So now we're going to have his prison epistles. The book of Philemon and Colossians, Ephesians and Philippians. It's very clear when Philippians is written. We can figure out Philippians from Acts 28 through that when, when Philippians is written. Okay. However, Philemon, Colossians and Ephesians, we're not sure. It could have been written any time between Acts 24 and Acts 28. Acts 24, 23 onwards. To, act, to, act to the end of Acts 28. It, those epistles could be written any time, but before the end of Acts. Yes, sir. Were they written from Rome? Were they were written from Rome? Not sure. From time period, not sure, because he only gets to Rome at the end of Acts 28. So it could have been written while he was under house arrest in the two years during Acts 24, 25, and 26 where he now sits and writes to the churches because people visit him there, gives him reports, and he sends some letters out to the churches. It's very possible. You with me? But that's his travels then to Rome, and then, then it seems to me, Paul said at liberty, Titus and Philemon, both of those epistles, if you read them, it seems to me if you read them that Paul is at liberty. He can move around. And it's possibly... It's at that time that Paul was able to move around to these other areas that you don't see him visit in the book of Acts. However, in 2 Timothy, it's very clear Paul is in prison, and it's his final, it's his final epistle, and it's very clear it's at the end of his life. So it had to be written post-Acts. Because... When Paul goes to Jerusalem at first, then 21, he gets captured. He's, in 21, 22, and 23, as he's dealings there in, in Jerusalem, then he is, they is, the, 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 the Roman authorities sees that the Jews are going to kill him and send him to Caesarea to Felix. And it's Felix and Festus and all these guys in Agrippa that Paul gets to meet in Caesarea in the two years plus that he's there. And then from Caesarea in chapter 27 onwards, Paul has now been sent through to where? To Rome. And we know in those journeys are recorded, you know, the greatest thing that you can do is sit down in one week and read through the book of Acts two or three times. Even more if you can. And just get the flow. Don't try to pinpoint and pick point what he said and when. Try just to get the flow through that book so you in your mind... I said to John this morning, I said, in my mind, I see this. I can see what's going on here because 
I've gone through this so many times. So I can see the picture of Acts. However, for somebody that doesn't read, hasn't read Acts, and you don't understand it, you can't see the first and second and third journeys. You can't see the journey to Jerusalem, you can't, the second journey to Jerusalem. You can't see him being captured and in the, in the, what's going on in that, in that argument, and, and, and he's giving his report. And then you can't see that he's then going, and, and then he's, he's from 27, you know, he goes, by the way, in chapter 22 and chapter 26, Paul, 26, Paul gives an account of what happened to him on the road of Damascus. In 22 and in 26. 26 is Agrippa. 22 is to Festus, I think, okay? So he gives an account of what happens in this, in this uh, not, not, not Festus, I'm sorry. I'm lying to you because he's not at Festus yet. He's still in Jerusalem, okay? But so he gives an account of what happened to him in Acts uh, uh, chapter 9. But now from 27, he's on his way to Rome because they wanted to send him back to Jerusalem. <coughs> Excuse me. They want to send him back to Jerusalem, but what does Paul do? He knows. If he goes back to Jerusalem, they're going to kill him immediately. So he appeals as a Roman citizen to who? To Caesar. And they say, to Caesar thou shalt go. And so Paul is now going to go to, on his way to Rome in that travels. Now, I don't know, I don't think Paul in that chapter 27 and 28, while he's traveling, sat down and have time to write on the boat. I don't know, you know, because there's shipwrecks and there's a lot of stuff going on during that time. Things getting lost and they, get, they escape on boards and, and all these things. They're on the island for so long and, and all these things. There's a lot of time, there's time that passes as he's on his way to Rome. Which now then brings me to the liberty. It seems to me, he's, could you agree with me that Paul is still captive? Based on the information I've given you without you really checking it maybe, or maybe some of you know it, that Paul is still captive from chapter 24 onwards. But when he writes Titus and Philemon, uh, not Titus and Philemon, in 1 Timothy it seems to me from the epistles it possibly could be that he's at liberty. But by the time I read... And so it had, that had to happen after Acts. Titus and, 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 and 1 Timothy, his pastoral epistles, seem to then, by conclusion, had to be written post-Acts. And we don't have the history of what happened exactly in that post-Acts. And then, sorry, and then we know 2 Timothy, Without a doubt, we know 2 Timothy, Paul is standing at trial. He's going to be waiting for his sure in, pen, in, in death coming. That's going to be a, a fact as he's writing his last epistle at, at 2 Timothy. You guys with me? Any questions? Yes, Todd. Romans, Romans, Romans is written in Acts chapter 20. So at this day, Paul has not visited Rome yet. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. But was there a church at was there a church at was there a church at Rome? Yes. Could there be a church at Rome by Paul sending other people out to go preach the gospel out there without them not being there? Yes. Well, that's in, that's how we know that's how we know that the book of Philippians is written without a doubt in the end of Acts twenty eight because he's now talking about the household of Caesar. Because he, end, he ends up, at the end of Acts 28, he ends up in Rome. And now he's at the household of Caesar. He can talk about the household of Caesar because he's there. That's when he writes Philippians. That's why we sure know Philippians is written, end of Acts 28. We're going to, look, we're going to go through those books one for one. But I wanted to give you this little bit of an overview this morning. To try and just get a picture in your mind about what's going on. And I know it's like me showing you a movie that you've never seen before maybe, or maybe some of you have seen it before, but I just run through this movie at one and a half times the speed and expect you to remember all that stuff. My, my instruction to you is, if you want to understand this stuff better, you need to read the book of Acts. And by the way, you should try and read through the book of the Paul's epistles at least once a month. Once a week is good, but at least once a month, just read through all the Pauline epistles. But read through Acts. Make your time to read through Acts a couple of times in a few sittings through a few days because it will do you great 
it will profit you a lot just to get the flow of what's going on. And if you, do, if you want to, I can give you the outline with the over, overview that I, we've done through the book of Acts. We've done an overview of the Wednesday night Bible study. I can give you that overview with the maps. I can email it to you so that you can have that as a first-hand copy so that you can, if that will help you to, to just get the flow of it. Any other questions? So now, by the end of this study, now you're going to say, I still don't know when all these books were written. But that's okay. That's all this filling that you need to. I'm giving you a skeleton, and what we're going to try and do is put on the skeleton some meat and some skin and some, get some form out of that. Yes, sir. At Crete, yeah. Yeah. It's possible that he's gone through that, but it's not recorded. Like I said, we don't have all the history. We don't have every little bits of this history. It's possible, and that's why he writes it post, post Acts. Yeah. That he's left him there, and because we, we go through Titus, he's going to mention stuff like that, and we're going to have to figure it out and, and, and he, couldn't, he can't leave him there and start writing a letter to him immediately. He has to come and some things have to happen, then writes him a letter. Because there's other information in the book that tells you that now he's at liberty. Well, he wasn't at liberty when he left him at Crete then. So, you know, so you have to, do, you have to know a lot of more information to try to fill in, the, to, to get the timing right. Anything else? All right. Okay, guys, thank you.